Morning, morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, so, as we were just saying, 5th of November today, uh, expecting some fireworks, hopefully, from the group this morning. Uh, we're talking about uh, making a difference. Can you make a difference? Should you make a difference? How do you make a difference? Who makes a difference? Who doesn't make a difference? Uh, is your difference uh, making positive or is it negative? Hopefully, it's positive from this group. We've had some... Uh, some strange inputs uh, recently locally from the belly of the beast to the Zonda Commission and uh, a few other things along the way and uh, the elections in the US, uh, you know, are those guys making a difference? I'm not sure. They make a lot of noise, but uh, whether they truly make a difference, I don't really know. But yeah, so uh, a topic that's close to the Wisdoms team's heart, uh, the Difference Maker, uh, our foundation program. Um, and uh, yeah, our very, our very first giveaway that became one of our best sellers only. So it was uh, an, interesting, an interesting start into the corporate world for us. Um, but it's not about that. This morning it's about you, you as an individual. Um, so I think we'll, uh, we'll kick off uh, with, uh, with Ed this morning. So Ed, yeah, your thoughts on the subject. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting actually because America could make a huge change because yesterday the United States withdrew from the Paris Agreement on climate change. And it's, if Biden wins, he'll go back in. So it could have a big impact on the planet. Um, I like recycling, uh, being, a, being an environmentalist. And this is really great because the subject of my blog on Sunday, my environmental blog on Sunday, was about change. So I can just recycle the stuff from there, which is brilliant. Um, there's a couple of bits not on there, which I'm going to add. And I thought about change from a personal point of view, from a national point of view, and an international point of view. And I thought I'd just use some examples. And you might remember from my, my um, story that I changed my life when my doctor said, get some exercise or die. And strange enough, he was called Dr. Stern. Well, about 10 years ago, I was helping with a race in, in, um, on the south coast of England. And a lady was there waiting for her son to come through. And we were chatting. And I found out she came from the same village that I'd lived in when Dr. Stern told me that message. So I told her the story. And, and then she told me another story about how he'd saved her life because she was a smoker with a heart condition. And he was brutally honest with her about what her life prospects were. So she changed, she gave up smoking and now she's fit and healthy. So there's one guy that has saved two lives just by giving a clear message. And I think having authority. So I think there's something in there about having a clear message and not being afraid to tell the truth. But I think very often we don't make it clear what, what the results and what we want are or what the intentions are, what the things are, so a clear message. And then I thought about my experience volunteering at Chicks, which is this children's charity that provides respite breaks for disadvantaged children. And I, I'd often wondered whether we did any good, because you show a child a bit of heaven and then you send them back to hell. But it's been going for 22 years and a couple of children that have been on breaks now come back as volunteers. They're, they're in their sort of mid twenties. And I talked to them and I said, you know, did it do any good? And they said, yes. And, and I said, well, you know, what was it? And it was just that someone had shown an interest in them. And someone said they could do something. And I think we, 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 underestimate the power of yes you can so that's my thoughts around individuals and i don't know if you've heard in in this country of a guy called marcus rashford he's a footballer apparently he's quite good i don't follow football so i don't know but he had a poor childhood and in the uk to our great shame i think a lot of children get free school meals because they're from poor families and it's families in work who still can't afford to feed their children. And then when the coronavirus came, of course, schools were closed. People were worried about um, 
children going hungry. And also, normally in the holidays, there are like children's clubs and things which help feed people. These weren't there. So this footballer started this campaign to get vouchers for children so they could have free school, you know, free food during the holidays. And the government refused to change their minds. So he just upped his campaign, went viral on social media, and the government backed down. That was one guy changed the whole country. And, and then um, on my blog, I talked about Bob Dylan and, and, a, and his song, When the Ship Comes In, that some of, of, of you on here might remember Bob Dylan. He was a kind of American protest singer, really. Uh, I can see Ivan smiling. He's obviously a, a Dylan fan. I, I never liked Dylan because I didn't understand what he was singing about. Um, but it, there was a, a song called When the Ship Comes In, which I think was all about change. And he's, he's virtually saying, we are the army, we are the revolution, stand aside for we are the future. And it was about young people being the future, being the change agents. And the last line of the song is, and like Goliath, they will be conquered. And of course, nothing happened from all that protest movement in the 60s and 70s. Nothing happened. Look where we are in America today. So I thought, well, you know, he was wrong. But then I thought about it. And I think actually now he's right because we have new Goliaths. Think of Greta Thunberg. Look what she's done, a 16-year-old schoolgirl. But she hasn't got a catapult like, like David did. Sorry, we've got new Davids, not new Goliaths. She hasn't got a catapult. She's got social media. And through social media, a 16-year-old schoolgirl on the autistic spectrum spoke at the United Nations and she changed the world. So I think, you know, with passion, with honesty, with clear messages, because she told the United Nations, you are stealing my future. How dare you? And honesty, clear messages, and social media, anyone, anyone can change the world, and we could all change individual people. So that's the soapbox finished, and, and um, I'm just hoping Ivan might find the Bob Dylan song somewhere. And I'm going to put a link to my environmental blog in the chat. There you go. <laughs> so I think the times they are changing without a shadow of doubt. So Herman, let's get over to you. Welcome back. Haven't seen you for a while. Morning, everyone. Well, I think change is a, a quite an ambiguous kind of subject because irrespective of what um, was mentioned just now about uh, a doctor saving two people, but the fact remains that um, out of a hundred, out of a hundred people who are um, having having heart problems, only seven will change their habits, even though they know by not changing their habit is going to die. Okay, and. Um, uh, Ed also mentioned social media as a as a tool for tool for change, but social media is also being abused for just the opposite. So that's why I'm saying it's a very ambiguous kind of subject. However, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I don't believe in change. Um, I I in many ways actually consider myself a change maker, if you like. Um, I looked at uh, Lee's mail yesterday and she raised three questions. How do we initiate change in our world? Can individuals truly make a difference? And if yes, how? Can we initiate change, change as individuals? And I very strongly believe that. I'm actually involved in projects that have exactly that as their goal, namely change. And I'm busy at the moment writing a series of articles under the headline of social change through agriculture. So um, as I said, I, I, I definitely believe um, that 
not only change is possible, but it's necessary as well. Because if we carry on doing what we are doing, we've got nothing left on this planet. And uh, so change is an absolute must. But we also know through studies that uh, what Robert Keegan calls that there is immunity to, to change, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to the people of, uh, who wouldn't change their, their habits, even though they might die. But um, to create change, and I think what we need to do is to really look at, at change in a, in a systems kind of context. For example, this country needs change. There's no doubt about it. If we carry on doing what we're doing, we will have an Arab Spring in, in two years' time latest, if not sooner. So in order to avoid that, we need to change. And looking at South Africa as a system, and I think that's a mistake many of us do, uh, namely not to look at South Africa as a system. And why is that important? Because the system can only be changed. If I, as an individual within the system, start changing myself. That's the first step of any change within a system. Without that, a system cannot be changed. How do we do that? Well, if we are aware that the result of, um, um, or the quality of the results that we produce depends on the depth and the quality of our awareness from which we operate. Because very often we talk about change in a very kind of superficial kind of way. It's, it's a very demanding and a process that um, demands deep dives into ourselves, into the system we want to change. And as I said, do that uh, from a quality level with regards to our awareness that will allow us to bring about what we want. How do we do that? We need to listen very deeply from various levels, depending on the situation we are in. We may, we may to, have to listen to facts. We may have to have an empathetic approach in our listening, or we may have a, a generative approach in our listening. And um, yet the majority of us is unfortunately uh, stuck in what we call downloading. In other words, we the say, you know, the same old, the same old, and the same old. The moment we, we want to get involved in change, we need to stop that. And we need to look at the future, the way it, 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 it emerges and how we can impact on it. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, lots of, lots of good points there. So Trevor Carty, sitting amongst the wet grass. Uh, let's hear what you've got to say. So, I think the first part of the change story always reminds me of the little girl walking along the beach and there'd been a storm and all these starfish had washed up and they were everywhere to be seen as far as I could see. And this little girl was just bending down, picking them up one at a time and throwing them in the ocean. And this elderly lad comes up and says, young lady, what are you doing? Um, can you not see that there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands? What difference do you think you're making? And she picked up another one and she threw it back in. She said, I made a difference to that one. And uh, so I think we've got to be mindful of how big change can be in terms of the, the never getting around to doing anything. Um, and that it all starts with a little something. And the question is, where's the little something that you're going to start with? Is it like Ed? You're going to go car free. Um, you're going to recycle. Um, is it a health issue? You're going to change and start walking every day or whatever the case is. Is it uh, just a, a mindset shift that you need to just get you going? Um, those neuron pathways of ours, uh, because most of the time, it's so overwhelming. Uh, we do nothing. I heard a commentator this morning um, saying that when Trump was in the White House, it was like a circus animal arriving. You never knew what was going to happen. And uh, But the reality is he, he was a major agent of change. Um, and he, he just got on with doing whatever it is that he thought he would change. So 
So uh, sometimes you end up looking like a circus animal. And uh, I think it all comes down to who you think is watching you um, and what is your motivation. So if your motivation is love or if your motivation is hate, um, your outcome will, will be appropriate to what difference you thought you were going to make in that space. And uh, yeah, I think we can all make a difference. I think it does start with the individual. Um, I think if the individual can motivate the collective even better, and that's the beautiful thing of the power of the vote. Uh, 253 to 214, Michigan in 99%, 16 electoral votes, and uh, the projected winner is Biden. There's, there's nearly 270. Um, so yeah, people are making a difference every single day, and uh, whether you voted by mail or whether you stood in the queue, um, what we're seeing happen in America proves that you can make a difference. Everyone can make a difference. Great, thanks, Trevor. All right, uh, Vinay, let's get across to you next. Hi, um, I, I'm going to go down to the starfish level. <laughs> and <clears throat> I always watch things about inspirational people and how they change the world. And um, they can do it from a very powerful platform and they've got lots of money. But um, one of my personality traits is that I need to service, um, which fits, really, fits in very well with the career I've chosen. I need to be of service. And when South Africa went into hard lockdown and um, there were a lot of poor communities that just couldn't feed themselves, um, domestic workers and gardeners, that <clears throat> people just didn't pay because they weren't working, which you can understand, but uh, it wasn't really fair. And um, I started a little food collection and delivery service in the complex that I live in. It's only 44 units, 44 houses. And um, I couldn't believe the generosity of people. And, you know, I said, you bring the food, I'll cook it. And we went and delivered meals. It ended up to be a bit of a logistical nightmare because there were riots, but... Um, I'd like to believe that that we actually made a change in those people's lives. Like Trevor Carty's story, we made a, a difference in one starfish's life. And I don't believe we always need to institute change on a massive basis. I hope that if the complex next door sees what we're doing, they will do the same. And um, that's where I think that in my world, I can actually make a difference. I can make a change. And that if we create a, a spirit of community. Um, as some of you will know, my, my mom lives in Clarence. It's a, a tiny little town. It's got a population of about 2,000 people when there's no visitors. And the sense of community there, they feed 250 AIDS orphans every single day. And it is all done by 2,000 people that contribute something, whether it's their time or money or they contribute food, and you get a sense of the community there. And I think that if we can take our communities and just start with something small, and it will mushroom and it will grow, and it'll, it can actually change the culture of a nation, where we're not so inwardly focused, but we rather look at what we can actually do to help the person next door. And that's mine. Thank you. Yeah, Abby. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Renee. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Donovan, uh, your thoughts? Donovan, are you with us? Okay, uh, not raising Donovan at the moment. Uh, let's come back to him. Yes, but let's come across to you then. Morning. Um, yeah, making a difference. Uh, <clears throat> the acronym, if you take the first letters of the world, is MAD. Uh, and uh, and I think, Ivan, you have a similar thing about unreasonable people who change the world. So I think uh, you must understand that when you are embarking on this making a difference uh, journey, uh, people won't necessarily understand what you're busy with. And it'll be a while before you can probably show people proof of what you're doing. Um, but it shouldn't stop you. Do it anyway. And then I think the other thing about making a difference is uh, understand that 
it was the culmination of bad decisions and bad habits over a long time that put uh, the world and want to change in the mess that it is. So don't expect overnight results. And much of what you uh, will have to work at is changing thinking, behavior, mindset. And so it's not a quick fix. You can't throw money at it only. You can't uh, force people through laws. So uh, what then is that process of changing mindsets? So it brings me then to the thing of uh, over what period do you measure the change that you've brought? And you know, I can only use my own situation as a reference. Um, and uh, I believe through the organization of GIG and the Community Chamber of Commerce, that is exactly what we're doing, making a difference. And uh, I believe uh, with the things that we are putting in place, it will be a difference that's sustainable um, and transformational, but it, it does take time. It does take a lot of energy. Uh, and uh, personally, I'm excited that the work that was started in some cases 12 years ago and in the Chamber's case four years ago uh, is now going to bear fruit because of the environment we find ourselves in where there's tremendous uncertainty out there in the world and uh, people are looking for something that that give them a sense of uh, certainty and, and even a sense of belonging. Um, it was an interesting thing yesterday. I spent the, the whole morning in a strategic planning session with a professional facilitator. But one of the things he mentioned about, so it's almost if you have to bring down your offering to the fewest possible words, uh, what would that be? And uh, then uh, he shared with us the, the Starbucks uh, slogan, third place. And uh, initially it didn't make sense until he explained that people, it caught on overseas that uh, people saw themselves oscillating between work and home, but they wanted to escape it and just go to a third place. And then the third place became this friendly environment where Eventually, not only did they break away for a cup of coffee, it even become an eating place. So uh, I think that sense of belonging on the one hand is going to become important and we need to give that to people. And in a way, Wisdoms is giving that to people in, uh, with these morning sessions. But we also do that with the, the chamber. Uh, and I encourage everybody who hasn't been to our chamber for a while, come and check it out on a Friday morning. And come and check out the uh, gig uh, and the journey that we that people are on about becoming that transformational parents that will change the legacy for their family. So I just want to close in to say it doesn't matter whether you're one person, like the examples that Edward used, or you do it as a group. And it doesn't matter if you have all the resources or not, but do what you can with what you have where you're at and you won't be le left where you're at, and you'll uh, start to make a huge impact. Thanks. Great, thanks, uh, Jasper. Yeah, we actually uh, ha have, a, have a certificate. I was just looking at it for our Difference Maker course, which is uh, is, a, is a mad certificate. So yeah, we, the making a difference is, uh, is something that we've uh, we focused on right from the early days of, uh, of that. So we used to issue it saying, you are now certifiable, certifiably mad. Uh, you've been on our difference maker course so uh, uh, that's uh, that's something that is definitely part of our, our ethos here so uh, Donovan are you with us I see you've got a school a school the school run on at the moment morning Ivan um, um, I'm not sure if you were asking for me to comment okay sorry about that yeah uh, I'm not sure if this qualifies as an individual making a change or a difference. Uh, my, myself, me and my wife, we uh, once or twice uh, out of our own you know, initiative, we hosted a health and wellness day uh, whereby we provided 
um, scanning, testing, and um, advisory services to members of the public without charging them. Uh, I think the last one we did, we were able to service at least 200 uh, members of the public. And we did that at our own cost, at our own time. And we just hope, you know, that little bit that we did made a difference in, in their lives. Um, so we, we, we didn't ask for anything in return, not even a thank you. But, you know, that's what we've decided to do. So hopefully we, we'll be able to do it on a bigger scale and to have a bit more impact. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Anuvan. I'm absolutely sure you made a difference there. So, yeah, that's a fantastic initiative. Well done. All right. Uh, Prima, let's, uh, let's hear your thoughts this morning. I, I believe uh, we can all make a, a change uh, in this world, ex uh, exceptionally right now, these days, uh, during the pandemic. If, um, if we have a dream and if we, have, if we are in the situation that we want to change, I think this is uh, an, uh, like, uh, an, something which incites you to make a change. Mm, and uh, when the, when we are when this when this something strikes you that no you don't want to live in that current situation, then I think you start searching for more scope uh, how to change that. And whether it's uh, you you cannot change it or you change it, but at least you made uh, a step forward to change uh, to do something. Uh, this is, I think this is what everybody is trying to do right now in this phase, that we are trying to, to make a small change in the world. And I think we will, we will reach what we wanted finally. Yeah, thank you. Great, thanks, Prima. Yeah, absolutely. Right, uh, Lee, let's have, uh, let's have your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> so... I have mentioned before uh, my little confession that I am a fan of Queer Eye. Uh, five, five gay guys that do makeovers uh, for well, people who nominated by friends or family. And I watched an episode of Queer Eye. My husband doesn't like it. Uh, so I can only sneak it in when he isn't around. Um, so he's away at the moment. So I watched the episode of Queer Eye. Uh, Queer Eye goes to Japan. And it, it's a fascinating story. And for me, it illustrates how uh, when one person takes action to make a change, it has a ripple effect in unexpected ways that they never even anticipated. And this little Japanese lady, I say little, she's my age, so 56, 57 years old, who, her sister died of cancer, she's very close to her sister, and her sister died in an ICU ward with tubes all over the place, and she found that very distressing uh, and wanted to create a place where people could die uh, in dignity and with friends and family around them in a home environment. And so she um, converted her home. And I say converted, she basically just gave up her home to anybody who was dying and she spent time with them and just then would sort of accompany them in their, their final weeks and days. And uh, so she did this because she wanted to offer something different. Uh, to what she'd experienced and not thinking that it, she would get any recognition or it would be noticed by anybody but her best friend finds out about Queer Eye, nominates her and I don't know how many other people have been applied for the very first episode of Queer Eye in Japan and she, this lady with her little, her little tea cozy sitting on top of her head gets nominated and suddenly these five guys come into her life 
and you start to dig a little bit deeper into her story and you realize that you, Trevor Carty spoke about, or somebody I think spoke about motivation uh, and that sometimes our motivations are also mixed. That yes, she wanted to give back because she wanted to give something that was, um, you know, more, more precious and beautiful than what her sister had experienced. But it also came from a place of guilt that uh, she felt that her sister had so much to live for because she had a young family. She didn't have a family. So why did her sister die and she didn't? So she felt this tremendous burden of responsibility to, to give up her life uh, for the sake of others. And, and so that inner change had to happen for her to then feel freer to give with greater joy to the, the task that she'd set herself. And then there was also this outer change. These guys came in, they redesigned her place, they gave her a makeover, they helped her to celebrate life. And, and she just brimmed, absolutely brimmed with um, excitement and happiness and joy. And one of the things, and this is the story, that this is the last thing that I want to say about this, is these guys came in and they enveloped her so literally and they and they checked with they had a Japanese uh, sort of cultural guide and they asked is it acceptable to hug and she said yes it's perfectly acceptable to hug and they hugged her and they hugged her and they hugged her and she hugged back um, and then at the end her best friend comes in and sees this transformed person that she'd nominated and, and the, the lady who'd been nominated turned to her best friend and she said, we've known each other for so many years. And these strangers, these strange men came, came into her lives and they all they did was hug me. We've known each other for so long and we've never hugged. I think we should hug. And these two ladies just held on to each other. And I just it transformed their relationship in some amazing way. So, and now this is being filmed and people are seeing the story and I'm sitting in South Africa and I'm seeing the story and I'm sitting on this platform and I'm telling the story. And so it expands and it grows in unexpected ways. Um, so that's my story. <laughs> change is possible in in multitude of ways and in unexpected ways fantastic thanks lee all right trevor now over to you to give us your thoughts and the wrap up the session lee uh, these people on the chat forum are teaching you with insignificance um have a look at what trevor got is started here. <laughs> in the chat forum it's crazy um and my apologies to your predicant or predicant is that correct uh yes <laughs> um right so uh you know i think uh i put something about the butterfly effect uh because i'm certain uh people have picked up on that before uh, the simple fluttering of wings on the other side of the earth uh, does it cause hurricanes on the opposite side of the earth um, in chaos theory. Um, I find that quite interesting. And I think that's what wisdoms is all about and the difference maker is all about. Uh, there are two aspects of the difference maker program. Um, uh, we, we throw in uh, 10 topics that people can actually work on in that program. And one of them is that uh, everyone is a role model. In other words, uh, whether you know it or not, um, if you think you're not making an influence in someone's life, uh, you're completely mistaken. Uh, you can be sitting back and doing nothing, uh, or you, you can think that uh, um, the 
uh, whatever bad things you're doing uh, to society, if you think you're doing it in a cocoon, someone else is watching you and, and someone else is, is following your example. And in fact, just going back to because I'm so annoyed uh, with watching that Zondo commission, one of the individuals on there turned around and said, well, I did it because everyone else is doing it. And that seems to be the standard argument uh, of our government officials at the moment, which is embarrassing anyone that has got any uh, common sense of any kind. So um, everyone is influential. Uh, someone actually mentioned, oh, it was the starfish uh, anal analogy. I, I think that is phenomenal. Uh, each individual, by whatever it is that they do, has an effect on someone else in the world. And then the other thing um, that that we talk about in our Wisdoms Difference Maker program, if you feel so strongly about something, stand up and be counted. Um, and that gives a really good insight into just how committed you really are about something that's happening in the world. And it's in the standing up to be counted uh, that people get knocked down. Um, so, so I have huge respect for people who actually stand up uh, and be counted. Uh, but I must say, I haven't had a look at what's going on in the US. Uh, I, I really have respect for people who do it with integrity, uh, honesty, brutal honesty, um, uh, that they... Uh, don't falsify the facts or hide behind truth or make ridiculous statements. So uh, stand up and be counted with integrity if you mean something that is absolutely genuine. Um, so I think those are my, my inputs. Everyone has influence. Uh, and from the smallest thing to uh, standing up on the highest platform, um, it, that gives everyone meaning in life, as far as I'm concerned. Right, thanks, Evan. Yeah, a friend of mine always used to say that uh, all influence is immoral. So I don't know about uh, whether you want to have influence or you don't want to have influence, but uh, yeah, give that one some thought. Because, um, uh, you know, what is influence all about? It's, a, it's about trying to get people to, uh, to see things your way. Uh, and is your way always right? I, I don't know. Um, so it's an interesting challenge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, just yes. Fine. That's that's good. Yeah. No. No. No problem with that. I'm sorry, I thought okay. I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I try sometimes, but you keep on unmuting. You know, I was just sort of trying try and cut you out of these conversations from now on. Right. So, folks, fantastic discussion this morning. Yeah, making a difference, I think, is 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 key to to most of our hearts, and uh, yeah, we all can make a difference, and and it's not always about the big things. It's more often about the little things. And I think, uh, you know, sometimes you might start something and you think it's little and, and it starts to grow and develop and, and become something really big. I mean, you, you can look at people around the world and uh, who've, who've done that and, uh, you know, are doing that. And, and it, everybody's an individual. It doesn't matter whether you're a Mark Zuckerberg or an Elon Musk or a Donald Trump or a Angelo Gritzi, you know, you've uh, made a difference in one way or another. Some are good, some are not so good, and but they're all individuals, and I think that's the key. You know, it's it's not to see people that have made these massive differences on pedestals. They they one person. They started somewhere, and they've made something happen. So um, don't be afraid to start. I think is the key. And uh, Trevor says, you know, stand up and be counted. You know, do do your thing. So yeah, uh, I think we can all we can all do that if uh, if it really matters to us. And then you've got to decide what really matters to you, and why it matters, and and that's typically based on your values. So if you really know what your values are, um, and I think unfortunately many people don't. They think they know what their values are. Their values have been handed down to them by families, by schooling systems, by environments, by politicians, and so on. And they've never really thought about them. But if you actually sit down and, 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 and give them some really good thought and decide, are these truly my values? Uh, you know, and, and if they are my values, what do they mean to me? And what am I doing about, about actually uh, meeting those values that I believe uh, I hold dear? Um, and, and I think that's a, that's a, key, a key exercise that's, that everyone should try and go through at some point in time and, and, and revisit. Because they may change over time, but if they're really values, they shouldn't change too much. So... Yeah, those are just my thoughts. 
Right, so tomorrow, uh, what's on the agenda for tomorrow? Who wants to uh, toss Lee? Are you going to toss something to the pot? Okay, there we go. Well, if somebody else wants to, otherwise I'll put my hand up. <laughs> um, Stand up and be counted. Yeah. There you go. Put your hand up, please. Oh, Stand up and be counted. Stand, well, that's exactly, that's the topic that I'm suggesting we talk about is, you know, what what is it that you want, that is your thing that you want to stand up for, you know, um, and I know Edward's I often, you know, come back, I'm an environmentalist, I'm an environmentalist, and that's his thing, but I don't know that I've really understood or, or we've heard Edward's story about why, why is that your thing? Um, and so that's what I would love to hear from you know, other people. So what is, what is the thing that you want to stand up and be counted for? Uh, why does it matter to you? So that's what I think we should talk about tomorrow. Fantastic, good one. Thanks, see. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day further. Uh, try not to step on too many ants when you go out there, Trevor, and uh, enjoy. <laughs> Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Bye-bye.